All right, here we are. Uh, I promised to do this clip in another video that I created uh, for a flight from Winnipeg to Calgary. So anyways, um, here we are. We're going to create the new flight, type it in, uh, CYWG Winnipeg, uh, destination airport is Calgary, CYYC. I'm going to go ahead and click create. You can auto generate the route at this point, but I just wanted to show you what happens when you just click the route create button without auto create. There you go, direct flight. Click auto route. We're going to use high airways for this to calculate. Boom, there's my route. But you'll notice we have a few missing elements. So if we click on display on map for Winnipeg and zoom in a little bit here, we see that sort of pink line that's dashed. Any line that's dashed is incomplete as far as the route planning goes. So we're going to open the charts list for Calgary and first of all take a look at the airport chart. I'm also going to pin these because these are things I'm going to need in Microsoft Flight Simulator or otherwise when I'm flying um, the plan. So uh, I might use this chart when I'm taxiing out to the runway to understand where I'm on the airport, many different things. But um, with that we're going to go to our departures and um, that's going to fill in that sort of dashed area. So I clicked on the eyeball there. There's one departure that goes out. That's not in the correct way. Uh, there's another departure that goes straight south. That's not the way I'm going. And then we'll try runway 31. Oh, look at that. That departure is exactly where we're going. So we need the vice on one departure. I'm going to show the waypoints. And we're going to click Add to Route. I'm going to overlay that departure onto the map here and also pin it. So we're going to pin that so that later if we want to look at our uh, SID chart or our departure chart, uh, we can very quickly pull it up on, uh, I've got another monitor or a tablet that I run, depending on what I'm using it for, and I can very quickly uh, grab my departure uh, chart or my airport chart or my arrival chart, star chart, whatever, whatever I'm looking for, it's all there ready to go. Uh, without me scrambling to open something up and uh, you can see them all at the bottom of the screen there as I pin them. So we're going to now zoom in to CYYC and open the charts list for that and I immediately go to taxi and airport and I want to pin that. And that's because when I arrive I'm going to want a taxi somewhere and I have no idea where I'm going. This I've never flown into this airport before. So I'm going to need this and I actually find out later in my actual flight to this airport that this doesn't match up directly with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this was a very difficult airport to navigate and I got lost. But anyways, we're going to attempt to land right here. Runway 11 uh, with an ILS approach. So we're going to need to plan that first with a uh, an arrival or star chart and uh, also with a uh, an approach. So there we know we, we know we're going into ILS uh, 11. So if I pin that to the map, you can see it overlaid, which is very nice. That's all the information I need, including um, my heading to it, and uh, that that there that I'm highlighting is going to be uh, our approach or our arrival. Sorry. Um, so if we click on arrivals and click the I, we can also select the runway runway 11. And we can see all the different points that that runway can accept uh, on a, an approach. So if we zoom in, the, the different colors are just to differentiate the um, uh, different approaches. Now if we... Sorry, I'm uh, voiceovering this after having recorded it. So uh, sometimes I'm losing track of where I'm at. But we're going to click the eyeball on the approaches. and select our approach, which is ILS Runway 11, and then the eyeball on the arrivals, which is the star charts. And so we've already selected ILS Runway 11. You can see it uh, just happened before, and what we're looking at is our arrivals now, and clearly that green arrival is a good one, um, but it doesn't connect directly to our ILS on Runway 11. So there is a way to add that, um, but just mentioning um, for you, there we go. So we've just chosen an approach to, uh, it's 2Tub4, I believe. And if we click on this, there's still that dotted line there and click Add to Route. 
that's going to add that last waypoint, Botox to Kissel, which is our uh, last. Um, that's our approach. And our arrival's in green there. So now we've got a complete flight plan, and we've got all of our charts pinned. So we can now see there's our arrival, two tub, there's the chart. I'm, I'm going to pin this one too. So now when we're coming in, uh, you'll hear me reference this chart actually in another video uh, of this flight plan in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it's also on my channel. And when I'm referencing the minimum altitudes or um, you know that arrival having to be above 16,000 feet on the first nav beacon and uh, the second um, nav aid is, I'm, uh, I believe is 210 knots maximum airspeed. So when you hear me reference all those things, uh, that that's the chart I'm referencing and now I'm taking a look at the actual um, high on route charts so you can see the airport and the first that's Vison that's uh, our departure and we fly from our departure Vison to our route and there you can see me going through all the different charts that I have pinned and I can very quickly select the chart to look at or actually overlay it on the map very quickly so that I can see what my departure uh, is uh, fly heading 315 degrees um, to 1300 feet or below stay below 1300 feet so that's very quickly uh, accessible to me um, when I when I'm uh, in mid-flight because the last thing you want to be doing is being on a departure with traffic and ATC in your rear um, you know also handling flight controls I don't fly autopilot till I have climbed well and out of the departure because things can change on a whim uh, with ATC I like to stick fly it at least till I'm out and to my uh, um, at least halfway to my cruise maybe if I'm flying high altitude and on my way out of the airport. And right there we can um, overlay our arrival or our star chart and we enter at Alada which there it shows on the chart. That's the route we're taking in and then at Burko we have to be above 16,000 feet to two tub and Burko to two tub and then Ebdic and at Ebdic with maximum of 250 knots that then brings us to Tetut where we're 210 knots and we have to be at an altitude of 8,000 feet when we hit or sorry Letut not Tetut but uh, we have to be at 8,000 feet maximum 210 knots to Botax uh, which uh, after passing Letut will receive instructions from ATC uh, to reduce our altitude to 5,500 feet it looks like and we can check the ILS approach for that, uh, what the altitudes are for intercepting ILS to runway 11. And there's our um, approach into our ILS 105 degrees uh, into runway 11 CYYC. And that's what a full uh, my, my only complaint really, now, first of all, Navigraph is great. I've got a few little quirks with Navigraph, like it, I'd wish there was more zooming. I'm just going to save this off actually so that I can import it into, you can save these and export them and then import them into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It does work. Now there's a few quirks I discussed in my other video about that, but it, but it does work. And my quirks with Navigraph are small things like I wish the zoom levels, there was more of them. Sometimes you're zoomed in too much, but one zoom level out is, is too much zoomed out. Small things like that. But Navigraph otherwise is an excellent package. I highly recommend it to anybody who's wanting to do proper flight plans and have accessibility, especially to all the uh, Jeppesen maps, the airport uh, charts specifically in the STAR and SID um, charts. They're invaluable if you're trying to uh, learn anything about uh, flight or, or, or getting your license or pra you practicing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You, to be honest, you really can't do it without these charts. They, they, you need to learn about these and you should be following them on your flight plans and loading them into your uh, GPS. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy.